Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is April 4th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Big low out over the Gulf of Alaska, helping to amplify this ridge, and that's what's coming next for us. It's going to warm us up a bit, but this is also still kicking off some waves, and those waves are going to reach some of the California coastlines here as we go through this weekend. But the big story yesterday was quite a few lightning strikes across some of Southern California, the higher terrain. I had a lot of people writing in and talking about those thunderstorms yesterday. Glad I got the chance to talk about that in the forecast yesterday. This slow moving low is going to still kick off some storms today. We'll check out to see where exactly those will be. And off to the east, we're getting some severe weather here yet again. Now, taking a look at yesterday, if I back this up, you can see where they first fired up right across from the transverse range. Look at all these lightning strikes going off there. Now, Actually, if we go back a little bit further, you can see some of the lightning activity and thunderstorm activity out here across some of the desert regions as well. Then we scroll through the day, and again, the thunderstorm here was kicking off a bunch, actually several thunderstorms. Then we started to get some here more just north of the Los Angeles County area, or including Los Angeles, some of Ventura County. But you can see a pretty impressive amount of lightning strikes here. And there was some heavy rainfall and some flood reports underneath those as well. And then we scroll in through the day, and you can see, again, some additional thunderstorm activity across some of the peninsula range. Some of these lightning strikes tried to push out. You probably heard some rumbles of thunder if you were in, in some of the Los Angeles basin yesterday as well. There's those were moving from north to south across the area and lightning strikes there showing up just off to the east of Orange County as well. And then look at this thunderstorm here as the sun started to set. I mean, just numerous lightning strikes associated with some of these storms. And there is going to be the chance today for some additional thunderstorms. It's not going to be nearly as uh, you know impactful as yesterday, but there will be some. And you can see these lightning strikes showing up after sunset yesterday as well. And now here we are in towards this morning. You can see no marine there to speak of across Southern California. And if we look at the wider view of things, we also had some of these showers kicking off across the foothills. There was a thunderstorm right there, the foothills of the Sierra Nevada, just off to the east of the San Joaquin Valley. As we scroll through the day yesterday, you can kind of see some of the thunderstorms across Arizona as well as that low pressure system continues to very slowly peel off to the east. Now, taking a look at that here, the last 24 hours, and again, you can see all these lightning strikes out there as well. So the models did pretty good overall, speaking with that. And if we take a look here, this is a weather uh, uh, station that you can purchase for your own home. Very nice for the price. And you can save 10% off by clicking on the link down below. It's got its own lightning detection system. It'll tell you how far the lightning strikes are away from your house. And it's got all kinds of cool stuff with it as well, UV index. And yeah, it'll send you all kinds of cool information, stores the data for you in the cloud, and it'll broadcast this live. So no matter where you go, you can see what the weather is doing at your house. And I want I zoomed in here. I wanted to show you guys this, the San Fernando uh, area there, and there's Burbank and Glendale. You can see that we did have some of this very heavy rain get out over some of the lower elevations here, and there were some flood reports with that here, mainly water over roadways and things like that. But I, I did think that was interesting there yesterday with some of these thunderstorms. And if you want to help support the channel, we're now doing all my updates here in between the daily briefing videos on Pacific Northwest and California Weather Watch Patreon page, which is also in the link down below. So wave action here as we go through this weekend, we still got the sneaker wave threat. Eureka National Weather Service talking about this, and this is going to go on into the weekend and probably on into early next week as well. As you can see, the Bay Area is also talking about this Sunday through Monday, 6th to 7th, strong currents. Watch out, rip currents out there, sneaker waves. You guys know the drill. And I did want to point this out that today the slow is pushing off to the east. Some of Arizona is going to be under the gun for these thunderstorms as well. I mean, it doesn't look like they had any percentages for Phoenix, but some of the higher terrain definitely under the gun here also. Now, taking a look at that wave action, I did want to point this out. We are getting kind of a break as we go through the day on Saturday. But then as we go through Sunday, you can see it starting to impact Northwest California, Crescent City, down through the Bay Area, and even down through Southern California as we go on in through the day Monday. That big low out there still churning those waves, and those will be headed our way as we go on into the early portion of next week. Kind of keeping things elevated all the way on in through Wednesday morning before a bit of a break there. But still, it's not even much of a break as we still have systems moving into the Pacific Northwest a bit as we go through next week as well. And again, the elevated waves will be with us through much of the next week. Now, if we take a look at what is going on, you can see our ridge kind of smashed between this trough that has been bringing us our active weather here and this trough well out over the Pacific Ocean. You can see this again starting to slowly drift off to the south and east and weaken there. 
and not even weakening that much, but slowly drifting off. And then we get the ridge, which is going to bring us some nicer weather. And then we're going to bring another frontal system in here with this lobe as it swings through. And then we'll see what's going to happen after that. And it looks like another ridge amplifying as we go on in through next week. And then we'll see what's to come after that. And if we look at 500 millibars, so this is just raw temperature data at about 18,000 feet. And you can see why those thunderstorms were getting kicked off yesterday. This cold air aloft over the region. And you can continue to see it peel off as we go through the day today. Probably a thunderstorm chance for some of the transverse range, the peninsular range. But again, not as widespread as what was going on yesterday. It's mainly going to be across my Arizona and New Mexico. And then we scroll on in through Saturday. And you can see that cold air continue to move off to the south and east as we get our warmer air and some ridging here as we go through the weekend. If we look at lightning flash density potential here, and you can see the spin of the atmosphere. Again, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico targeted, but you can see you cannot rule out some of this lightning activity across some of the transverse range down into Baja as well as that storm continues to pull off to the east. Uh, this is the Storm Prediction Center, so they don't have anything for Southern California, but do keep that in the back of your mind across some of the higher terrain off to the east of San Diego and Orange County for the most part as well. And the European agrees with that also. It does show that potential today, but again, the bigger uh, threat is off to the east. Now, looking at 850 millibars, 5,000 feet, I've been showing this on a daily basis because you can see the cool air aloft, uh, at least uh, speaking of temperature anomaly here, colder for normal for this time of year. But then you see the ridge kind of sandwiched and extended back up across the area there, and we warm up a bit. Then we bring this frontal system here, and you can kind of see the cooler air return for a bit. But then you can see the ridge is out here off our coastline, and it gets reestablished, and you can see the warmer air building in as we go on in through the mid-portion the following week so total snow i did want to point this out that it looks like um arizona and new mexico this is a pretty good snowmaker for some of colorado and new mexico here this time of year not bad to see that but we're not talking about a lot here at least in the short term for california then the next frontal system swings through and it really you know i was hoping to see a little bit more but you see maybe a, an inch or two across some of the klamath or cascades up here but not much to speak of with that one also so wish i had better news to report on that front but Anyway, let's take a look at the extended forecast because this is the European artificial intelligence. This one goes out about 15 days. And you can see the precipitation starting for some of maybe Crescent City as we go through the day on Sunday. It starts to lose its punch as it gets down towards the Bay Area, but some light rain, Sacramento Valley, and again, some of the foothills of the Sierra Nevada, Sierra Nevada as well. And then that system swinging up through the Pacific Northwest, we get a little bit of a break, and the next system maybe rolls in on Thursday, but again, losing its punch by the time it gets down towards the Bay Area. And then, you know, not much to speak of here. There's kind of some trophy action hanging out there. We'll see what that does through the extended. But then we've got additional systems maybe off in the future. We'll continue to watch those day by day as well. And then you can see another ridge building for us so total precipitation in inches i'll scroll through this and again this is for today can't rule out a couple of lightning strikes in some of these areas here just kind of keep your eyes on the sky for that if you see those big dark clouds building over the higher terrain of southern california know that's what is going on there you might get a thunderstorm or whatnot and then as we go through the next frontal system you can see some of the sacramento valley there's san francisco northwest california but again it loses its punch by the time it tries to get down towards the central coast Here's daily two meter max temperatures this is for today, Friday, April 4th, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So, so we are warming back up here in the wake of that system as we go through it next week. And you can see some more seasonable temperatures here around and then maybe who knows what's to come after that. We'll continue to watch it. No major heat wave, but definitely a bit of a warm up. Six to 10 day, look at the big difference between the east and the west there. This goes through April 13th, and there's the below normal signal for a lot of California. Eight to 14 day, something similar across the southwest, and eight to 14 day as well. Don't like to see that below normal, but there it is as we go through April 17th. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying the channel. Again, check out the Patreon page. Hope you guys enjoyed that thunderstorm activity there yesterday. Eyes on the sky again today. Not as widespread of coverage though, and that'll be pushing off to the east. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.